It's your family tree, a mystery. Are you fascinated by genealogy? Well, hip, hip, hooray, let's talk DNA with Julie. The truth is in your genes. In cut-off genes. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's me, Jules. Welcome to Cut Off Jeans, the podcast that helps you find your truth using nothing but DNA. I am Julie Dixon Jackson, hence, uh, henceforth known. No, I am Julie Dixon Jackson. Uh, I am a genetic genealogist, henceforth known as a Gen Genie. Well, that went well. So obviously, this week's episode is not a regular episode because of the holiday. Um, so, but I thought I would do an offering anyway. Is that the word offering? I don't know, but. Because of the holiday, um, we are skipping uh, doing a regular episode this week, but we will have a brand new full episode next week. So we're not doing, so you're getting two episodes in two weeks this time, even though this one isn't a full one. So let me tell you, the reason was because I went to uh, St. Louis, Missouri this last week uh, with my high school friend, Betsy, to visit our high school friend, Chuck Harper, in St. Louis. Never been, well, actually, you know what? I was going to say I've never been to St. Louis before, but I have because I've been on tour there. Um, But I don't remember seeing the arch when I was there, which is weird because how do you miss the arch? You see it everywhere you are. It's very strange. Also, fun fact, I have always thought that the St. Louis arch, the gateway to the west if you will I did a lot of uh, learning while I was there it's very interesting and the museum there is very interesting and I learned a lot about St. Louis and was reminded that because I didn't grow up in this country I missed a lot of basic U.S. history Um, so I always thought that the arch went across the Mississippi River with one side being (laughs) uh, in St. Louis and the other side being in Illinois But that is not the case, and I'm sure most of you know that. Uh, But I was shocked, I tell you. Um, And I don't know how ignorant that makes me, but anyway, it was very interesting. Love St. Louis, actually. It's a beautiful city. Uh, Architecture is gorgeous. And really happy I got to go and see my friends and have a great time with Betsy. So that's the story. I didn't get back till Wednesday. We didn't have blah, blah, blah. You understand. Anyway, I am going to play for you guys the first part of a three-part epic odyssey. And this is Christy Jacobs. And I figured since it's a three-parter, boy, it's a doozy. We could listen to the first part this week. This is it. So have a listen, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Hi, guys. I have on the line Christy Jacobs from Texas. Where in Texas are you, Christy? I am just north of Dallas in a town called The Colony. Uh, You were referred to me by uh, Tiffany, who was our last Epic Odyssey, and she said you have a fantastic story that you would like to share with me and the listeners, and I, for one, would like to hear that. Well, thanks a lot for letting me share my story, first of all, Julie. And um, Tiffany, I've only known her for two short weeks. Oh, wow. But she is, she's literally an angel, as far as I'm concerned, she in is. my life. Yes, she And is. I told her, I'm. she's stuck with me. She's never getting rid of me. I am 52 years old. Uh, like I said, I I grew up in North, in North Dallas. Um, I've never lived anywhere else. Um, I have two older siblings that are identical twins, sisters, and a younger brother. Growing up, um, I knew I was different than my siblings because, um, of course, my two older sisters are identical. And then my, my brother didn't look anything like my sisters or myself. Mm-hmm. Um, just in, in a lot of ways, I just knew I was different. So as I got older, um, I discovered or learned that my mother had been married previously. And through that marriage, she'd had my twin sisters and my the person who um, I thought was my biological father, his name's Kenneth, had adopted them. Wait, so you didn't, you, how old were you when you found out your sisters were your half-sisters? <laughs> <laughs> I was in grade school. I was like in the fourth grade. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. All these years, I didn't know. I just knew, I mean, and they're very little, petite, uh, 
are gorgeous women. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like five foot one. I'm five ten. Oh wow! You know, they're <laughs> brunette, brunette with hazel eyes, like my mother and my uh, Kenneth. I'm gonna call him my daddy because he raised me. Sure. And um, I was born with with red hair and blue eyes, and nobody in my family. I just look like no. I look like no one. Right. So. When I found that out, it, it didn't really sink in because I was so young and I didn't really understand. Um, but their, bio- their biological father had basically given up his rights when they were one years old. Sure. And so he came back in the picture uh, right before they turned 16 and he was trying to reconnect with them. And that's when my world started to get wackier than what it was, I guess. Okay. Um, also, my mother um, was bipolar as well as her mother. Mm-hmm. So... Back then, there was no diagnosis of as bipolar. So growing up, my life, again, was different than most people's lives. Yeah. You know, uh, not knowing what bipolar was, I just knew that our lives were different. So I'm um, going to fast forward. My mom divorced my daddy when I was 14. Okay. And my sisters were already 18 and moved out of the house. And she had met someone else that she was going to marry. And she wanted to introduce him to uh, my brother and myself. His name was John, and uh, in introducing him to us, she had told us that she had met him a long time before when she used to be like a cocktail waitress out at Lovefield Airport. Okay. And and this man was in the was in the Air Force and had flown through, and they had dated a couple times. And you know, fourteen, I really didn't care. I'm like, what, you know, whatever's going on, kind sure. of ignoring it. Yeah. And then she, she, they get married, and then she comes to me at one point, and she's like, you know, uh, Christy, what would you think if uh, if John was your dad or something like that. And I, in my mind, I thought she was saying if he adopted me. Right. And I, so I just replied, no, I don't want to be adopted. And I know that my brother doesn't either. That's our daddy is our daddy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I kind of blew it off. But as I got older, she started to tell me when I was 16 that um, Kenneth, the man who I thought was my biological father, my daddy was in fact, not my daddy, that this man, John was that she had had an affair with him in 1968 when he was he would fly through and they would date or whatever she got pregnant he was married she didn't want to tell him um she didn't want to interrupt his life um she had dated my daddy a few times and they just got married you know and i was just again 16 Mm -hmm. and i knew my mom was not the same as a lot of other moms Mm -hmm. but i was just like i didn't even know how to calculate that in my mind how to process it and I just kept pushing it aside because it wasn't unusual for her to say kind of odd things. So you thought maybe she was just making it up. Yeah, it could have been, you know, because I know she really loved this man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe she just felt like she wanted this connection, a deeper connection with him, okay. you know, and the fact that they did date during that year or whatever. Yeah. But I, but again, I looked nothing like him. He's okay. like a Czechoslovakian, olive skin. I'm Scottish and oh, wow. Irish, very, okay. very fair. Uh-huh. <laughs> so there's no way we looked alike. But, you know, they were married for 30 years. My mom passed away in 2011 of cancer. But when I turned 20, I had my first son, Tyler, when I was 22. Um, when I was 25, 26, I'd gotten into a really heated argument with my mother. And I never fought with my mother in my whole entire life. We got in this huge argument. And um, I just told her I didn't want to talk to her anymore for a while, basically. Mm-hmm. And so I just cut off communication with her for a while. And she, in turn, instead of trying to call me, wrote me this 20-page letter <gasps> that I got in the mail. And so I'm reading through this letter, and I'm just like... 20 page? 20 pages she Single wrote spaced? this letter. Single spaced? Single spaced on, like, you know, notebook paper that you tear out of a spiral. Was she on a manic uh, uh, high? At this, at this point, she was. Okay. That she was. Sense. Um, within the letter, there was just a lot of kind of manic stuff going on, and... Um, And then she was just like, you know, Christy, I've always treated you different than your other siblings because I always felt bad and I always wanted to give you more attention to them. And I'm just reading this. I'm like, I don't understand any of that because I didn't see that growing up. Mm, But mm -hmm. now that I'm older, my siblings told me, yeah, they saw it. Right. And I never, yeah. And I never saw it. And so in this letter, she goes on to talk again about, uh, the fact that my daddy, Kenneth is not my biological father neither is Johnny, the man that she had tried to tell me from the age of 16 to 26 was my biological father. Now it's a man that she met in February of 1968 
kind of a one night stand, but she knew his first and last name. Okay. And he didn't know anything about me. Again, he was a married man. She wasn't married. Sure. Okay. She got pregnant. Side note, did Johnny think he was your father? At a, for a while, he would tell everybody I was. He would introduce me as his daughter wherever we would go to his family when I met his family. And they accepted me in. And at the whole time, I'm like, there's no way. But did they you know, think, But I mean, does was he just introducing you as his daughter because you were married, because he was married to your mother? No, or do you think he, he thought he was your father? I feel like maybe he thought it for a while. Okay. Because, you know, my mom was constantly, look at her, you know, from like my grade school t- pictures with like big buck teeth and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, kind of matched his grown up teeth. Oh, so she <laughs> was trying to find comparisons she was try- and similarities. Yeah, character- okay. yeah, characteristics. I mean, if we were all together in the kitchen, she'd go, sometimes you just act just like John Charles, you know, your mannerisms are this. And I'm just, she wanted it so desperately, yes. okay. you know, that, that she, in her mind, it was real. Yeah. Um, and Johnny never questioned it one bit. When we went anywhere, this is my daughter. This is my daughter, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so going back to the letter that she wrote me, oh, she yeah. then denies that and then says that this other man was, and she had met him through her girlfriend's boyfriend, um, and they all just partied one night, and things happened. Hmm. Again, this man was married. She didn't want to interrupt his life. Sure. So she, she never reached out to him, even though she could have. She knew exactly where he worked. And... um he was a good friend of her girlfriend's boyfriend, basically. Okay. And so she never reached out to him. She was out one night cruising. Uh, there used to be like a boulevard or something in Dallas where, where sure. younger adults would cruise in the cars and everything. I remember and, cruising. <laughs> okay. And the guys with the muscle cars were parked on the side of the street. And I guess my, my daddy had this amazing Impala and stuff. And she had ridden around with him a few times. I'm having and, visions of Dazed and Confused right now, by the way. <laughs> I know it's, this is crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. These are, but this is her story to me. Yeah. And, and I mean, I just like, when she would tell me stuff, I would just told, I would never bring it up again. I All wouldn't right. question her at the moment or anything. Cause I'm like, is the, is she, is this just in her mind? Yeah. Is she trying to make herself feel better? Yeah. Because, you can't, because I'm okay. Yeah. With people like that, you don't know if they're known as people that fabricate things, you can't trust them ever. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so, um, basically she said that night, you know, she was like, do you want to marry me? And he was like, yes, they drive to Oklahoma. Back then you could just drive to Oklahoma. I guess they had 24 hour drive through justice of the pieces or something in Oklahoma. They got married on April the 13th. Um, I was born November the 13th, same year. Uh, so like, wait a minute, I, wait, who, I, I, did I miss a part? Who did she marry? No. So she ended up marrying. So she married Kenneth, who all these years I thought was my biological. Oh, father. Kenneth, she'd met a cruising. Yeah. Okay, got it. Right. Got so it. she married okay. him while she, while she was pregnant with me. She, gotcha. But you know, she was only a couple of months long or something. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so yeah, I was born exactly seven months later, and I weighed nine pounds, Ooh. fourteen ounces. So. I wasn't, not, not knowing this when I was growing up, I wasn't a preemie, but no one ever, no one ever said, oh, she's not yours. Right. And at one point, there was one point I did question my mother when, um, when she had mentioned this and I called her about the letter and I was like, why would you, have, why would you have lied to daddy and tricked him into marrying you? That's, to, that's just so, and it's, it's hurtful. I feel hurt for him. Yeah and me it's just deceptive Mm -hmm. and she was like you know christine i told him six weeks after we got married i tried to leave him and i kept telling him look i'm pregnant um it's not yours this isn't right Right. um but my kenneth my daddy was was he was just no yeah Yeah, you're pregnant of course you're pregnant you're pregnant by me and she you know and i've never and by the way side note my daddy does not know any of this stuff none of it he, Kenneth, he does not know that my mom has ever told me that I'm not his. Oh, really? Okay. He knows nothing. And he's an amazing man. And yeah. I would never want to break his heart like that. Yeah. And so yeah. um, then she went on to tell me that when I was born, of course, my daddy was there. And she was like, he just held you, you know, in his arms and said, this is my daughter. This is my beautiful daughter. And I, you know, I was like, man, how do you. This is my even, beautiful, enormous, preemie. 
Yes, right? <laughs> and all this time she's telling me this and I feel so bad. I'm like, should I tell this man that? Uh, but I'm just a kid. I mean, such a quandary. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I am just the product of a situation that happened and I'm the result of it. Oh, geez. Yeah. But it comes yeah. with so much baggage from. As we I all mean, are, by the way. Right. I mean, in, in this situation, we have, and we're the ones who are vilified for it for just wanting to know exactly. the truth. And it's so unfair, really. Exactly. It yeah. is. Her mother, my grandmother, was also bipolar, and she resented me my whole life, mm. her whole life, you know, because she knew my mom got pregnant out of wedlock, and she resented it. Mm. You know, at one point, I mean, she was so crazy bipolar that she, when I was in third grade, my mother had left my brother and I with her, why my daddy and her had gone grocery shopping or something, and my grandmother locked me in one of the bedrooms at her house. And I was trying to get out, and she came in there, and she grabbed me by, like, my pigtail and kind of just slapped me across the face. Oh, my gosh. And she was like, I wish your mother had had that abortion with you. No! Yes. And I was literally, I mean, you remember traumatic things in your life. Of course. In, you know, there are in your things life. that we never forget that are fleeting for them, usually. Exactly. Oh, and wow. I, was in th- I was in third grade. I'll never forget it. <sighs> and I oh, crawled out the window awful. and went and locked myself into the my dad's truck that was outside so oh and I never told anyone about it until I got older and I told my mother because I didn't know what it meant but I knew it had to be something horrific and yeah. evil because she wished it upon me oh my god and just her tone and so again she you know I, I was always being kind of blamed indirectly because of the thing that my mom and this man did right yeah, yeah. so um going back to the letter one more time so okay. <laughs> i read that i read that and i just and i never responded to her about it i never asked her about this man or anything you know in the letter she's like you know christine you look just like him he's six five slender blue eyes and she just went on and on and on and i was like i'm just done i mean from from like 13 16 to 26 yeah i can't i cannot do this anymore mm-hmm. um now, so my two older sisters were always on me, like, do you really think that Johnny is your dad? Don't you want to find out who your dad is? And I'm like, no, I don't. Oh, my God, because there's so much mental illness on that I've had to grow up with yeah. from these people. Yeah. What if it's the same? Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I was, I've had enough of that, you know, till I could write a book. That's I really a think worry. about it, too. Sure. Sure, it yeah. Is. And so, and I'm happy. My daddy is an amazing man. Mm-hmm. I mean, he adopted two other little girls basically me and had a, I mean, Mm -hmm. and he was just responsible. Right. So, um, I never really thought about it. I never brought it up again. Um, when my mom was dying, she, she literally, um, you know, apologized to me for everything, Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, at, at that time I'm just like, okay, it's done. She's apologized. We'll move on. Fast forward to whenever the DNA ancestry stuff came out, and I don't understand how to do that stuff at all. Sure. It's it's a learning curve. Right. (laughs) Absolutely. I don't understand. I have, you know, an undergrad degree and I have an MBA, but when it comes to science and stuff, I'm I'm out. Oh, it's a, yeah. (laughs) It's, it's not something that you, it's definitely something you have to really focus in on. You really, really do. Yeah. So I spit in a cup, I do this DNA, send it off, and, um, waiting for it anxiously to come back. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, look at all these people that I'm related to. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how the only, you know, I could, I could see some of them that I knew. And I'm like, how am I going to figure out who I'm related to through my mother versus whoever my biological father is? Right. That's the first, that's the first hurdle. (laughs) Yeah. So I um, asked one of my sisters to do the test as well. Smart. And it was going to help my other, they're identical twins. So it didn't matter who did it. Exactly. Because they can share their report. So when it came out, I was able to weed out maternal side versus biological father side. And I started reaching out to people mm-hmm. and just emailing them. You know, by that time I had, a, I have another son at that point and I'm like, they have the right to know some of their history. And one day maybe they're going to become parents. Mm-hmm. And so that really was what was driving me. It wasn't that I thought I wanted a extended family yes you just want answers you want truth that's that's it yep. and everyone deserves their truth um and it took me a couple of years to, to really let that sink in mm-hmm. you know what i'm not ashamed of this at all because th- it doesn't define the person i am absolutely not but it has helped cultivate the person i am and it also explains so much when you really right. know the truth 
it just kind of puts things into perspective and, totally. and you know what you're totally. dealing with. Totally. Yeah. So reaching out to people, I, in my mind, I just thought I'll reach out to people and they'll know what's going on and they'll be able to help me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm like a mad woman <laughs> cutting and pasting the same message and briefly telling them my little story. Oh no. And they're like, yeah, I looked at your tree. None of the surnames make any sense yeah. to me, blah, blah, blah. Maybe yeah. it's some, you know, and so I was like beaten down. Yeah. And then about a couple years later, I'd heard about family tree, uh, DNA. Mm -hmm. So I uploaded my, um, your uh, raw data. Yes, yes. My raw data. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, I uploaded that up to family tree DNA and then, uh, it seemed like everything was a lot more detailed, really? you know, and broken down for me. Huh? Yeah. Okay. And I, all of a sudden I had second cousins and you know, I didn't even have second cousins with my maternal side. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, so I do now have like three, but I didn't. But okay. so this woman um, reached out to me. Her name's Rhonda, and she's a cousin of mine. She lives in Tennessee. And she was just flabbergasted that somehow I was the second cousin of her father who was in his 80s. Okay. And at the time, I was in my 40s. And mm -hmm. she's like, I don't, I don't even know how this happened, you, Christy. But I, she has so much information. She's like, I'm going to find out who your biological father is. So that has been going on for like the past two and a half, three years. So we have Ronnie couldn't figure it out. I'm just like, kind of like, whatever, then I'm kind of done. I'll just check it, my account every now and then and see if a sibling pops up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm going to fast forward through the future okay. to, to two Fridays ago. Oh, the wow. Friday before okay. Father's, the Friday before Father's Day. Of course. Um, <laughs> I, got a mess, I got a message on Messenger from Tiffany. Uh Okay, cliffhanger as always. There are two more parts to this story, believe it or not. Um, so stay tuned. We'll have part two next week. That is one week from today. And we will also have a complete episode with Richard Castle, my cohort, friend, and producer. Uh, you can find Richard on Twitter at Castle Songs. You can also find him on his website, uh, Richard uh oh, richardcastle.com, I think. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter at Jules Jackson with two O's. Find the podcast at Cutoff Jeans Pod. Join the Facebook group. It's private. You have to request to join Cutoff Jeans Podcast. And if you would like to reach out to me, uh, if you would like to request my services, you can reach me at Jules Jackson at cutoffjeans.com. That is Jules with two O's. All right. So I hope you guys are having a great Independence Day weekend, and we will talk to you in about a week. Don't forget, the truth is in your genes. <laughs>